Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in. My name is David A. Kwa and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're a brand new visitor to my YouTube channel and have no idea what my videos are all about, I love talking about things I'm passionate about, man. Movies, comic books, video games. I do hauls, reviews, unboxings. If uh, that's the type of thing you're into, you may want to check out my other content. And if you like what you see, do subscribe. So, I'm going to talk about the new movie from Ubisoft and Fox, Assassin's Creed. That's right, I just saw it today in theaters. And uh, it stars Michael Fosbender, Jeremy Irons, Marion Cotillard's actually in it also. Uh, good actors, you know, in a, pretty mo in a movie that's pretty decent, I'll be honest with you, okay? I actually really enjoyed it. And this is coming from an actual Assassin's Creed fan. As you can see here, I play all the video games, including the ones on Nintendo DS. Uh, I played all the ones on the mobile phones, like Assassin's Creed Identity and, and Pirates. I read the Assassin's Creed comic books, okay? I collect t-shirts and posters and action figures. I am a huge Assassin's Creed fan. I'm telling you right now, as an Assassin's Creed fan who's very concerned about, oh, don't screw up my franchise and stuff like that, I'm saying the movie's good. All right? And it's funny because I'm watching all these other like YouTubers reviewing the movie. I'm reading like IGN and Entertainment Weekly and all these other, other uh, people reviewing the movies like Yahoo and stuff like that. And they're just, and they're just oh my gosh, you're just slamming a movie, man. This movie's terrible. Negative reviews. This movie's bad. Don't go see it, you know? And um, they're saying things like, oh, the video game movie curse continues, you know, with Assassin's Creed and all that. And, and I'm just like, what do you got? It's not that bad, you know? Uh, and, and, you know, I read the reviews, I watch the, their videos and stuff like that, and uh, I am now convinced that these people work for the Templars, man. These people are working for bad guys. They're the Templars. They're trying to, they think this movie's propaganda and stuff like that because, you know, the Templars are being seen as a bad light. They're the bad guys in the movie, you know, and they don't like that. So they're just saying they're, 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 they're trying to prevent the movie from being success, like, successful, you know. They're working for the, how do you think they became big YouTubers in the first place? You know? How did these companies became big, you know? IGN, come on, <laughs> you know. So, so, uh, so, yeah, I'm telling you right now, the movie's not that bad. I really enjoyed it. I'm, I'm going to tell you guys, it, it's not perfect, okay? It's, it is, it, I'll tell you right now, it's not my favorite movie of the entire year, okay? I, 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 I don't rate it better than, you know, like Rogue One or Captain America Civil War or anything like that, but, uh, but I still enjoy the movie, okay? And I, I'm a person who's really faithful with the Assassin's Creed series. I, I, I'm a huge fan. I, I, I don't want them to, to screw it up, you know? You know? So I'll, I'll tell you what I like, what I didn't like, what, uh, my, my full review and thoughts, okay? And from just by saying that, you probably would say, are you going to give some spoilers away? And I probably will, okay? I'm, I'm just going to ramble in this video, give you guys, I'm going to lay it all out. I'm going to tell you guys all my thoughts, everything that came to mind. I, I'm just going to say it, okay? So chances are that probably includes spoilers also. So yeah, spoiler alert, all right? So uh, the first thing I have to say about the movie, uh, I really like the acting, okay? It has a pretty decent story also. I like the fact that it's very true to the source material. And that's a lot to say, man. Imagine anything adapted, whether it's like a video game or a comic book or something, to say something like that, it's like a huge deal. They are very true to the source material. All the mythology and the lore that's already established, it's there, you know? The vocabulary, especially. Like, all, the, all these words. I play the video games, I watch in the movie, I'm like, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm glad they use those words, you know? Abstergo, uh, the bleeding effect, the leap of faith. Synchronization, desynchronization, all those words are being used in the movie. I'm like, thank God, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad they're using that particular vocabulary, okay? And they even explain it, they give the definitions and stuff like that. I like that, all right? Now, not everything's perfect. Like, not, not everything's like the same as how it is in, in, in the, the, the animus, for one thing. <laughs> you saw it in the trailers. It's like this big giant arm that attaches to you and stuff like that. I don't know why they did that. I, I read one interview and it says, oh, they don't want to mistake with the Matrix or something like that, you know? Because in the video games, it's just a chair or a bed or something that you lay on, and that's the animus, you know? You, you just lay down and you just dream, and it records all your memories. And this movie is like, man, it's so exhausting for this guy, you know? He's being strapped on this thing, he's climbing, he's moving around, it's like he's being twisted around. <laughs> Like that, that's not how it was in the, in, in the, uh, the video games. Why, why is it so, so like, it's all over the place too. Um, probably a very common question is, is the movie canon? Is this considered canon? Is it, is it part of the Assassin's Creed franchise? I'll be honest with you, as an Assassin's Creed fan watching this Assassin's Creed movie, I welcome it 
as an, uh, a new addition to the Assassin's Creed franchise, okay, I, I accept it as part of the Assassin's Creed franchise. Is it canon? Well, they said some things and they did some things. I, I, I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, the, like, for number one, the, 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 um, the Animus, it looks weird, okay? The big arm hanging out. The, it was never like that in the, uh, in the, um, in the video game, so I was like, why, why is it like that, you know? Uh, very little characters from the video game show up. I mean, Jeremy Irons' character, he is mentioned a lot in the video games, you know, as a doctor and stuff like that. As the CEO of Abstergo. But, and we, we see him in this movie, and... But I want to see someone else, you know? Especially when... Here, I, I, I want to say this... Uh, this is a big warning for those of you who are, like, uh, getting your high hopes for this movie and stuff like that. The movie takes place more... Uh, the, the main plot, the main story, the, the, the primary plot of, of the movie takes place in the present day, okay? Yeah, in, in the video games, you, know, you, you, you focus more on the, uh, whatever you see inside the Animus, you know? It's like, oh, you're focused on Ezio's story, or, uh, or Altair, or maybe you're playing as uh, Arno, or, or uh, Edward Kenway, or Connor, or something like that, you know? But in this movie, it's like the main character is Callum, uh, Michael Fossbender's in the, in the present day, okay, not the past day, they, they, they just need those flashbacks, those memories to move forward with the story in the present day, which is kind of how it is in the video games also, if you really think about it, okay, like the story with, with you know, um, uh, uh, Desmond Miles with Lucy, with Sean and Rebecca and Bishop and all that, that stuff, uh, all those characters, they move from game to game, but, uh, you know, uh, we see Connor in one game and then Edward in the next game, we don't, don't ever see him again, you know, like, like uh, but, but those characters move on, you know. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I was fine with the fact they focus more on the present day story and, uh, you know, killing the character, the, the, the Templars as they're in, in the present day, you know. One thing I really like about the movie, uh, that uh, it's kind of canon, you know, you, you can consider it part of the, uh, the the story if you really think about it. The actual weapons, there was like, um, throughout the entire game, there's like, uh, you know, weapons in the Abstergo facility, right? Like, in Jeremy Irons' uh, office, for instance, he was like, playing the piano and on the table right here, it's like, there's dual pistols, there's like a crossbow, there's like a sword inside a glass case, and, and like someone's shield over here, it's like, you know, <laughs> there's like a actual stuff that you see in the games. Now, are those pistols belong to actual Edward Kenway? Is that crossbow belong to Arno? I don't know! But the thing is, um, um, it, 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 it makes you think, you know, that this could be part of the Assassin's Creed franchise because I recognize that weapon or whatever, you know, and later on they actually broke open, like, later all, all the assassins are inside the Abstergal, they're also being captured uh, in the Abstergal uh, facility, just, just, just like Callum, uh, Michael Fosbender's character. They also, uh, they, they broke open, they, they tried to escape, you know, and they're using the weapons, for, they broke open the, the glass case and they're fighting with the weapons, you know. I was, I was, I was like looking so hard to find, um, uh, Jacob Fry's uh, cane, you know, I was looking for, for all, all over the movie, but unfortunately it wasn't in there. Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot of weapons. It's like, uh, okay, there's a sword right there. It looks very familiar. There's dual pistols. There's a crossbow. I don't know. It's, <laughs> but um, I just wish it didn't use the Apple of Eden again. Man. We've seen so many games already that uses the Apple of Eden as like their their piece of Eden that they're looking for, you know? I wish it's like they, they, they use something new, you know? Because we've seen the Apple of Eden with uh, Science Creed 1 and 2 with Altair and Ezio's uh, story, you know? We saw the Apple of Eden. Um, uh, but I wish you used some stuff, something else, you know. In every single game, there's like some type of piece of Eden they're trying to looking for. Where it's the Apple of Eden in Assassin's Creed um, Three with Connor. It was, it was that uh, it was that necklace thing he was wearing that he threw into the the graveyard, and that was the whole thing they were looking for, you know, uh, the, the shard of Eden. Um, there was like uh, in Assassin's Creed Four Black Flag, there was like a ring and a skull and stuff like that. There, there those were pieces of Eden. Um, with Arno, it was like that big sparkly shiny sword, and uh, what was a Sounds Creed Syndicate's piece of Eden? It was a sh the, 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 um, what's the scarf? The, um, the shroud, the shroud of Eden. That, that was the, uh, the, the piece of Eden that was, uh, that was in the Sounds Creed Syndicate, the most recent game that came out, you know? Um, but, uh, Jesus Louise, why can't it just make up some new piece of Eden rather than use the apple again, you know? Uh, I believe there's, there are multiple apples of Edens, but, but oh my gosh, I, I wish they used some new piece of Eden instead of using the apple again, okay? I, yeah, and even if you use the apple, give me some backstory, you know? 
Uh, they never mentioned, well, okay, they didn't mention that there was going to be that first civilization. You know, like like Jupiter and Juno and all that. Um, uh, uh, they, didn't, they weren't really mentioned, but they just said, oh, we're looking for the Apple of Eden, which we may have came from some previous civilization or whatever, something like that. I was like, just tell us up front, man. <laughs> it's like, we already, know, some of us already know the lore of, uh, of Assassin's Creed. Just tell us, you know? There was the first, first civilization. They tried to make these pieces of Eden to use it to control humans and, and and that's what the templars are using because they wanted to achieve peace through, the, through, through control it's just, uh, why couldn't they just say that you know so um so yeah uh i do want to talk about the animus for a little bit there's like there's three segments where callum is actually hooked up to the animus and we see like we, we, we flash back and see the memories but there's like one scene in the beginning so in a way it's like four scenes during Aguilar's story, you know, the, the uh, uh, Michael Fosmer's character from the, the ancestor, the past, okay? Um, there was like a two or three minute segment at the very, very beginning of the movie, like when it started, okay? Like before the, the opening, like, titles open up. So it's like a pre-title sequence, okay? Where Aguilar is like accepting his blaze and he's like uh, uh, saying his oath to join the Brotherhood of the, of the Assassins and stuff like that. That was like the first scene from like the Spanish Inquisition, the 1400s, 15th century, whatever you want to call it, okay? Uh, so that's like two, three minutes. And there was like a five minute segment, uh, which is like the, the first time he was in, in, in the Animus. It was like a, there was like a, it's a chase sequence, okay? It's like five minutes long. And then later on, it's like a 15 to 20 minute segment uh, where he escapes from being burned at the, by, of the stake and he starts climbing all the buildings. And, that, and then he does the leap of faith, which we will talk about later. Oh my gosh, we got to talk about the leap of, of faith in a little bit uh, later on in, in the video. Um, but uh, that, that was like the second part, you know? And that was probably like 15, 20 minutes long. And there was like a final segment where they, they, they finally find the Apple of Eden, you know, in, in, in the past, okay, uh, during the 15th century, and um, there was like a boss fight, basically. There was like a big boss fight at, at, at the end, and that was like the final segment that we saw with Aguilar, okay? So, four segments, pretty much, three main ones, but like four in, in total, which I would have to say 30 to 45 minutes total, out of a two-ish hour movie, okay? Um, eh, <laughs> you know, so... Uh, like I said, the main story is in the present day. It's not about the past. You just need the past sequence to know where the Apple Eden end up. Um, one of the things I always enjoy about the Assassin's Creed movies is they always have these historical characters that show up in, in the movies, okay? Like, in the past, you know, you see, like, like the, 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 the presidents and this General General Lee and, and, and you know, all, all these characters that you that you know from, from the past, you know? Uh, <clears throat> in this movie, there is someone in there. It's actually Christopher Columbus. Okay, Christopher Columbus is the big historical figure that that, that we see in, in this movie. Well, he he was barely in it, but but uh, overall, it was his. He was the one who held the Apple of Eden, and, and, and they, they they followed the, the clues and whatever, found this grave, and there there it was. Okay, uh, so he was like the big historical figure, which I'm glad that they did that. You know, every single Assassin's Creed movie they had like big historical figures in it. Uh, from from history, who apparently had a, a association and a conversation with the actual assassins. Okay, so this movie was Christopher Columbus. Okay, uh, the leap of faith. <laughs> so, what was it? The second time that he was inside the Animus, right? He was climbing on the buildings. And that was that was the scene that we saw in in the tr trailers, right? He was like really tall in the building. It was like a church or something, right? And he leaped off. We don't even get to see him land. That first time we all, like, here it is, the first time we see a leap of faith on screen, and it cuts off. He was, like, in midair, he jumps off, he was in midair, and, oh, no, these organizations, he can't handle the memory or whatever. We didn't, like, get to see the whole thing. And it's, it's crazy because um, people are doing interviews, and they're talking about the movie and stuff like that, and they're saying, oh, we have to use, we want to use actual effects, and we had a real stunt stunt person jump off, and this is going to be a huge sequence in the movie. It was barely in the movie. It wasn't even, like, completed, you know? So that first leap of faith was really disappointing. He, he didn't even complete, he never landed on any hay or anything like that, you know what I mean? He just jumped off the building, and while he was up in midair, and end of memory. So, I was like, crap, hopefully we see another one. So, and the, the, there was another time, the last part, he actually did a leap of faith, that's what they called it, but he jumped in the water, he was just, just standing on top of the bridge, right? And he jumped in the water, I was like, that's no leap of faith. <laughs> so, leap of faith is when you're trying to jump and then the possibility is you land on concrete. 
This dude, this dude he, he had a leap of faith, he jumped in the water and said, oh, you just did a leap of faith. No, man. <laughs> I, I don't consider it a leap of faith at all, okay? So that was the big leap of faith, turns out he just jumped from a bridge. <laughs> that was it. And then the final segment, I wish I could end the movie on a very high note if he just did a leap of faith right there. This is how the movie ended. Uh, the, uh, Cal Lynch, right? Michael Fosbender's character was staying on top of a roof. And he went... And then movie ends. It cuts off. Like, we know he's about to do... He's about to jump off the building. And the movie... And it just cuts off. How disappointing is that? I would rather see... Him actually jump off. He's running in midair. Directed by so-and-so. He lands. Black credits. And the you know, credits start rolling. That's how I would have done it. Not like... And then cuts off. Oh my gosh. So, Leap of Faith, really disappointing. It's like one of the big staples of Assassin's Creed, and it's like it's it's very disappointing for that. Okay. Besides that, the acting and the and the um, the story, it's actually not that bad. I really like the end fight. You know, at the end when they're trying to when all the other assassins, there were other assassins being uh being um, experimented on. Whatever one, uh, they, they they also went into the Animus, right? Sometime in the like before the movie was, you know, the, the setting of the movie. But they were all being locked up in there, and they all escaped. You know, they had these escape sequence we all see him there was this one chinese uh assassin or whatever there's this one guy's pro i don't know where he's from but they, they, they all start fighting or whatever they all broke the glass but they had the weapons inside and they start fighting with it you know it's probably all, all the uh abstergo soldiers or whatever it is i thought that was really cool that's my favorite part of the movie was that end fight you know and trying to, to get callum lynch out of there and then, oh my gosh there was a very heartfelt scene in there where callum lynch was like seeing like the ghost of his mom or whatever like through through the animus he was seeing his parents and, and um, they were like, you know, accept the oath, be an assassin, you know, just like us or whatever, you know. Um, towards the end of the movie, all the assassins got together and they, they got to the, like, the Templar headquarters and they killed Jeremy Irons' character, who I believe showed up, uh, he was, as I just mentioned, I believe uh, in a Sunscreen Syndicate, I remember hearing the name uh, of, of his character, um, you know, oh, we're going to use the shroud to, to rebuild him or whatever, you know, I, I, I remember, like, there was... Uh, the end of Assassin's Creed Syndicate was really weird because there was like these mutant monsters inside of tanks and stuff like that. And I was like, little, and then we saw Juno for a little bit. I, I was really thrown off by it. But but um, anyway, my point is when they killed the um, Jeremy Irons' character, I wish they did the thing where like it zooms out and, and then and it turns, everything turns into white, you know, the white background. And then... He gives his final words or whatever before he, he, he dies, you know? You know, in, in the movies when it's like a boss fight or you, you kill the assassination target or whatever, the whole screen turns white and then, and then and you, you know, he just says his final words and then, right, say anyway, the Pache, and whatever, you know? So, so, I wish they did that, but they didn't do it. So, whatever. Um, seeing as the movie took place in the present day, I wish we saw the present day characters that we see in the game. Like Sean and Rebecca and Bishop the Hacker, you know? Even the, I don't know, have Charlotte in there or whatever from the comic book series. Or what was her name? Galena or whatever? That showed up in Sasuke Syndicate. It was a, a, she was a Russian um, <clears throat> uh, assassin. Uh, I wish she was showing up or something like that, but no. And by the way, for those of you, there is no flashback or we don't actually see Ezio or Altair or Edward Kenway. Uh, I was uh, kind of hoping maybe see a picture or something like that. If there is, I, I totally missed it being my first viewing, you know, but uh, he was like walking through and there was like things on, on the walls and stuff like that. It was like quick flashbacks and uh, quick flashy scenes, you know, of newspaper articles and whatever. I, I, there there could have been something on there concerning you know, all, all the characters that we know from, from the games, but I, I if, if, if there were any Easter eggs that says the word Ezio or Connor or, or whatever, you know, I didn't see it my, my first time, okay? So, yeah, I like that they're very good for the source material. I like the fact that weapons from the Assassin's Creed, like, is in there. I like the fact that they have some type of leap of faith in there, and, um, uh, <clears throat> yeah, and, and it's historical figures and stuff like that, but, the movie's all right. I really enjoyed it. Okay, it's not that bad. All right. I, I, if you want to go watch it, uh, I, I feel like it, no harm. Okay, you're, you're not gonna walk out super disappointed, but uh, uh, I, I'm sure you'll like it too. All right. So I don't know what else to say. I was kind of hoping to have uh, some type of something to unbox. You know how, how, how I usually have my my movie reviews, and there's something to unbox. I, there is. Like the Assassin's Creed action figure for Aguilar, there was also like the uh, the Hidden Blade from McFarlane Toys. Uh, they actually made one. I saw that Toys R Us for like thirty bucks. I was like, should I buy this or not? You know. Um, but yeah, 
Maybe we'll do that in the future, when it goes on sale or something like that. I'll do an unboxing of Aguilar's Hidden Blade! Assuming it goes out on sale or whatever, you know? I, I have here, like, um, you know, uh, Connor's outfit right there. I got Ezio's belt. You know, I can wear Ezio's belt. And I also have Jacob Fry's cane, right? So... So anyway, that is my review of the new Assassin's Creed movie. Um, go watch it if you want to see it, okay? It, it, it's pretty good. I, I enjoyed it, okay? This is coming from an Assassin's Creed fan. I played the games. I read the comics. I'm telling you right now, it's not that bad. It's pretty good, all right? I, I, I liked it. Where are we on time? I've been talking for 20 minutes? How'd that happen? Okay. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe. I'll talk about more of movies in the future. And I'll do a live stream tonight of Madden and uh, Madden football, okay? Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.